Hello, I'm Cormar. Welcome to the Gourmet Vegetarian Cooking Video Encyclopedia. This edition, we're going to show you how to prepare all these delightful breads and savouries, such as assorted batter-fried vegetables, pakoras, cauliflower balls and tomato gravy, kofta, and potato puffs, aloo vada. So let's begin. Chickpeas are one of the most versatile legumes known. From chickpeas, you can grind chickpea flour, which is the basis of dozens and dozens of types of savoury and sweet dishes. I'm going to show you my favourite chickpea flour savoury right now. They're called pakoras, mouth-watering little bite-sized chunks of vegetables dipped in a spiced chickpea flour batter and fried to a golden brown. Very delicious. We're going to use chickpea flour as the basis of our batter. We've got one cup of that and we're going to mix it with a quarter of a cup of plain flour and a quarter of a cup of self-raising flour to lighten it a little. And as far as the spices are concerned, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt with one teaspoon of cumin powder, one teaspoon of coriander powder, one teaspoon of asphatida powder, one half of a teaspoon of turmeric, and a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So let me show you how that's all done. First of all, take a bowl. It's quite simple, really. Just add all the flours into the bowl, and then add all the spices and the salt on top. Take a whisk and some cold water. Add enough water to the batter so that you form a batter like this. Keep adding a little water at a time. Notice when you put your finger in the batter, it sticks nicely and forms a coating on the finger. Now we have to decide what we're going to put in the batter. Well, I've suggested a few things. You can have rings of potato, little cauliflowerettes, spinach leaves, whole baby tomatoes, or slices of eggplant, slices of pumpkin, or slices of green pepper. Let me show you how to cut eggplant, for instance. I like to cut my eggplant in thin rings, about a quarter of an inch thick, like so. They make very, very delicious pakoras. And if you're going to cut up a pumpkin, you should cut it up also in thin rings, perhaps half of a pumpkin. Cut the pumpkin down the center like that and then, and then cut it into little wedges. And if you want to cut up green peppers, cut them in half like this. Pull out the, the seeds like so. and you can slice them into little pieces like this. These are ideal. If you like, when you finish cutting them up, you can just finish off pulling out some of that center white part. So there's a selection of some of the things you can use for putting in your batter. Now the next thing you have to do is to make sure your ghee is on the right temperature. I've suggested 350 degrees. So we're just bringing that up now. 350 degrees. So let's take our batter, put it in the battering position here, and let's try some cauliflower pakoras for a start. Take a cauliflowerette, completely submerge it in the batter, shake it off, and put it in the ghee. In fact, you can do two or three or four at a time, or more. As many that comfortably fit in the vessel of oil or ghee as possible without overcrowding 
or bringing down the temperature of the ghee. Now you have to do one type of vegetable at a time because all vegetables take different amounts of time to cook. And try to get in all the vegetables uh, that you're going to cook in one batch within about a minute or two of each other so that they all cook together. So that's about one batch. So after they've been in the ghee about a minute, you can help them cook evenly by separating them if they're stuck together a little bit with some implement like this. And you can turn them over a few times so that they cook evenly. And this, this turning over should be done every maybe half a minute so that they're cooked all the way over. So these have been about three or four minutes and they're done. If you're not quite sure, you can always stab them with a knife. They're nice and soft inside. And you can see they're golden brown. Let's put them into our colander. These are like the vegetarian's answer to fried chicken. Well, how about some spinach pakoras? Or try green peppers. Let's try the pumpkin or squash. Oh, potato. And there they are. A delicious hot plate of crisp pakoras. Serve them out and they won't last long. Any pakoras left? Fried cauliflower balls and tomato gravy. Kofta are the vegetarian's answer to meatballs. They're tasty, easy to prepare, and great as a side dish, a main meal, or a snack. Let me show you how to prepare them. So over here we've got six cups of tomatoes that are simmering in one cup of water. This is the main substance for our tomato gravy. It's going to have some spices and things added. First of all, we're softening it up and we're allowing it to break down so we can push it through a sieve and collect all the puree. Now over here, we've got some cauliflowers. I'm just putting the last of these here in our food processor. Like so. A little more. Right. This is the shredded cauliflower for our cauliflower kofta. So that's three cups of minced cauliflower. That's about one small cauliflower minced up. Into that, we're going to put one cup of chickpea flour. Into that, we're going to add half of a teaspoon of fresh minced ginger one teaspoon of fresh chilies, 
one teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of fresh minced dry roasted cumin seeds, and three tablespoons of fresh minced coriander powder. So let's combine all those things. Let's put our chickpea flour in our cauliflower, coriander, and everything else on here. Cumin, baking powder, salt, turmeric, chili, and ginger. Now we have to get in there and mix it all together. Now you might say, well, I'd like to add a spoon, and, but really, the best way of mixing up your kofta mix is just to stick your hand in and squish it all up. Sometimes the best kitchen implement is your hand. This way you can really mix it up well. Well, this mixture's done. Let's pinch off little balls of mixture, roll them, put them on a plate. You should get about 10 or 12 out of here. It's interesting to note that you can make kofta balls out of potatoes, Brussels sprouts, or cabbage, or squash, or any combination of dry vegetables. So there's our last ball. Let's have a look at our tomato sauce here. It looks like it's ready to go through our sieve. So let's do that. Carefully pour it through. Like so. And let's push it all through capturing all the juice and discarding all the pulp and seeds. Let's scrape any residue off from the bottom of the sieve here. Right. Now let's have a look at some of the other ingredients in our tomato sauce. Three tablespoons of ghee. We've got one teaspoon of mustard seeds, one tablespoon of fresh minced dry roasted cumin seeds, half a tablespoon of minced ginger, one tablespoon of coriander seeds ground up to a powder, one teaspoon of minced chilies, a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a cup of fresh coriander, one tablespoon of honey. So let's take a pot, place it on a flame like so. Let's add our ghee. So, let's fry up our mustard seeds. When the mustard seeds start to pop, add your tomato puree. Honey. Fresh coriander. Salt, cumin coriander powder, ginger, and chilies. Stir it all up. Now we're going to reduce that down and make a nice tomato sauce. While we're doing that, let's fry our kofta balls. Place them in the ghee, like so. Now it's important at this stage, you don't touch them until they start to float to the surface. This is very important, otherwise they'll all break up. So keep an eye out. As soon as you see them floating, you can start to gently move them around. Use something like this, but be very careful you don't jump in too quick. It's important at this stage to keep the ghee hot so that the outside of the kofta's cooks crisp. And then you're going to reduce the temperature of the ghee so that they, so that they cook inside. This is quite important, otherwise 
the gear's too cool at this point, they'll all break up. And if you leave the gear on full all the time, they'll be cooked on the outside, but raw in the middle. So let's have a look at these now. They're not quite coming to the surface. I'm going to turn up my gear slightly, make sure they don't cool down. There's one here that's ready. It's come to the surface. See, it's that's one of the first ones I put in. The other ones are trailing behind a little. Of course, that's not cooked. That's just brown on the outside, so I'll pop him back in. See how they're all gradually appearing on the surface now? You can gradually just move them around now. See? So now let's reduce the flame on our kofta balls to low. Let's cook them until they go a nice dark brown color, so, sort of a reddish brown actually we're looking for. That'll take about all between 8 and 12 minutes. And while we're doing that, let's have a look at our tomato sauce here. It's cooking quite nicely. That's got about the same amount of time to go. So probably by the time the sauce is done, the kofta balls will be done too. So our kofta balls are done. And our sauce is done. Let's turn it all off. Let's take our kofta balls out. Drain them. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at those. Dark, golden kofta balls. Very popular. So there they are, golden kofta balls. Serve them with hot tomato sauce and everyone will ask you for the recipe. Crispy potato puffs, alu vada. Crispy puffs of potato dipped in batter and fried in ghee and served with fresh coconut chutney. Sounds nice, huh? I'm going to show you how to make them. First of all, you need some mashed potatoes. These are mealy old potatoes that have been peeled and mashed very thoroughly. There's about six cups here. We'll tip those into a bowl. By the way, they're cold. So you have to make them a little bit in advance. Now we're going to add some spices and different things here. We've got six minced chilies. If you don't like things too hot, then you can always reduce that amount. These are traditionally quite spicy. A teaspoon of fresh minced ginger. We've got minced raisins. There's about a dozen raisins there minced up. Two teaspoons of coconut, two teaspoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of coriander, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. All those ingredients Mix in with the mashed potatoes, including the lemon juice. And once again, using our best kitchen utensils, let's mix all that in. This recipe is from Gujarat, northwestern India, which is known for its very tasty savouries. So that's that's mixed in, that's quite easy. Now we just have to roll them to very firm, smooth balls, like so. Now we're just going to continue rolling until there's no mixture left. And then we'll carry on with the next stage. So they're almost all done here. Now I'm going to show you how to make the batter. 
take one cup of chickpea flour, one cup of all-purpose baking flour or self-raising flour, and place it in a bowl, like so. We've got some spices to go in here, a teaspoon of asafoetida, a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, and two teaspoons of salt. Let's dump all that in. Take one whisk and some water. Water as needed, I would suggest. In other words, you just keep adding water until you get a nice batter, just like a pakora batter, perhaps a little thicker. So that you'll be able to dip these little balls of mashed potato in the ghee and a little more water on it. They have a nice crispy coating of batter on them. A little more water. So as far as this batter is concerned, you're looking for consistency, just like pakoras, maybe a little thicker, so that when you dip the potato ball in it, it's completely covered with batter. Otherwise, some of the mashed potato will ooze out into the ghee. So there we are. That's a very nice consistency. So take your batter over to the ghee, which is on about 360. Dip your potato balls. I like to put three or four or five in the batter at a time, so they're completely covered over. So pop them in the ghee, just like you would normally cook pakoras. So I'm just going to put about six or seven in at a time. Careful not to overcrowd the wok when you cook these things. Let's have a look how they're going here. So one thing you should remember when you're making your alu vada is that only the batter needs to be cooked because the mashed potato inside is already cooked. So practically speaking, you're only looking at, say, 45 seconds to a minute, and then the outside is cooked. So as soon as that batter goes crispy and golden brown, they're ready to come out. And there they are, a delicious plate of hot, crisp potato puffs with coconut chutney. So there we have it, some of the best bread and savoury recipes from the Indian vegetarian cuisine. Happy eating. <laughs>